Now for our update from the Cricket West Indies four-day championship, let's start our round three, day two recap at Chedron Park, where the Windward's Volcanoes are taking on combined campuses and colleges. Our reporter, Gerard Morisili, is live on location. Thank you so much, Sir Lance, and hello to you, Moriah. <laughs> I hope you're doing pretty good. Uh, it was a really good day of cricket here, of course. Windward Islands Volcanoes leading by 154 runs at the end of play. The scores in this match so far, CCC batting first, 204 after an hour delayed uh, start on day one. Day two, the Windward Islands Volcanoes started their innings and they ended on 358 for eight. Of course, it was led by two magnificent hundreds, one from Sunil Ambrose first but the top scorer so far in this in is Kevin Hodge not out on 130 and looking to push on from this score but uh, for the CCC side Romario Graves the spinner taking 5 for 142 so far after bowling 38 overs he was given the majority of the bowling the bulk of the bowling job to do today and he did so very well grabbing five wickets although it was tough bowling against a Sunil Ambris who was very, very aggressive. The CCC team in the first session were able to capture four wickets, got four wickets, 72 for four was the, the score at one point in time. Uh, actually, the Windward Islands Volcanoes, there are 92 for four, when 108 for four at uh, lunch before uh, Hodge and uh, Ambris came together for a 195 run partnership for the fifth wicket. That was tremendous. That is where the Volcanoes really took control of this game after pretty much faltering in the first two hours, losing Melius early, uh, losing their captain, of course, and uh, then that's where things really started to go after. But, after. but when the two joined each other at the crease, uh, Ambris, he went on the counter-attack almost immediately, and then uh, they brought up the score uh, to over 200 runs at T, 231 for four at T, and that's when he brought up his century. After he was removed from the crease, after a good catch uh, from Gustavo Edmund, Edmund Gustavo from the CCC team, Romaya Grace, that was his fourth wicket. Uh, he was then, uh, well, I, when I say momentum shifted from Kevin Hobbs, who just played his natural game, and of course was in control of the game. Ambrose, though, I must talk about his innings because he brought up his half century in just 44 deliveries. 44 deliveries. When I say he went on the counter attack immediately, that's exactly what I mean. Hodge had to take a seat and watch his, his partner play. But I'm really happy, though, that he was able to get to 100. West Indies batters actually getting runs in this round because Craig Brathwaite at Sabina Park also got to 100. But the focus is on Chedwin Park. So, yeah, a lot of work for CCC to do who were who had a painstaking day in the field. At one point in time, Captain John Carter was visibly frustrated with his players because it seemed that they were lacking in patience, they were lacking in concentration, and they started to make a lot of errors in the field, giving away a lot of free runs yeah and then yeah but after Ambris was removed they were able to get a couple more wickets get three more wickets before the end of play so they're happy about that I was able to speak to two of the players Romario Graves the five wicket haul uh, spinner another five wicket haul going to spinners in this competition they have been dominating the wickets column let's hear from Romario Graves and then we hear from the Centurion himself Kevin Hodge about the day's play First of all, I just want to thank God for this opportunity for allowing me to be here to play at this level today. Um, yeah, pretty difficult wicket to bowl on, really easy pace to bat on. Um, the instructions from the dressing room were just to keep patient, bowl right areas and, you know, just stay patient and the results will come. Yeah, um, I mean, it was a pretty painstaking day for CCC in the field. Uh, you must be a little bit tired right now, but uh, where's your mentality at? Uh, very tired, but, you know, that's the job that we chose. So, you know, we know that this is what the cricket is all about. This is our first time playing for a class cricket, most of us. So we're just relishing the opportunity and thankful to be here and enjoy it. Yeah, well, the Windward Islands Volcano, they have a 154-run lead. Uh, tomorrow, of course, we'll be looking to get those two wickets and then hopefully uh, chase down those runs and get back the lead. Are you pushing for a win from this position? Uh, definitely. The first thought is always to win, you know. But if, you know, we find ourselves in a position where we can't, you know, we just try to as long as possible because it's really good so I don't see why we can't you know come out on top and try to 
take back control of the game and hopefully force a win. Yeah, it's, it's a very good batting wicket. Um, well, kudos to Sunil. You know, he took the, um, the positive route. Uh, it made batting very easy out there for us. You know, the guys were pushed back. Um, and I, it allowed me to just bat under the radar and keep taking it over. So, you know, obviously when he got out, unfortunately, I knew that I had to keep up the good work that we started and just try and, you know, stretch the um, lead as long as possible. Yeah, you just came back from your tour of Australia, of course, getting the game in there, getting a half century yourself. Um, how was that test experience that you got up, down, well, down under, rather? Um, how did you were, how were you able to apply it to this game and, of course, get your 100? No, I think it's just patience. Um, you know, playing at the test level, it's not easy. Um, you know, you get a, good, a lot of good overs um, back to back. So I think here, for me, it's just a matter of spending time at the wicket, um, you know, getting myself in, going through the processes and just knowing that the bad balls will come. The most important thing is, you know, you just make use of them, but just spending time and the rest will take care of itself. Yeah, well, you're in a pretty good position right now, um, controlling this first innings. What's going to be the game plan from here on? How much are you looking to get in this first innings? And we'll be going for the win, of course. Well, I think uh, we're about 150-something lead. Obviously, batting with the tail, you know, you can't really put a number on things, but just trying and bat as long as possible, um, keep the guys out there a little bit longer and just add some on the lead. Uh, I think that will be the plan tomorrow, but whatever we get, we'll take it. Yeah, so that was Romario Graves and Calvin Hodge there. Uh, pretty, pretty good day of cricket from both teams. Windward Islands Volcanoes, they have 154 runs lead. Going into day three, it's going game on for both of these sides. They both want to win, and it will be interesting to see who does come out in, on top. Maybe I would say it's more leaning in favor of the Windward Islands Volcanoes team, but uh, yeah, anything can happen. CCC, they'll probably have a chance to bat again tomorrow if they can come early in the morning, get those two wickets and get themselves in there and try to knock off these runs. But they are Windward Islands Volcanoes. They have two wins from two matches and they want to make it three out of three. They lead by 154 runs. The score so far in the first innings, 204 for the combined campuses and colleges team. Windward Islands Volcanoes, they are currently 358 for eight. That's it here after day two of round three, the West Indies Championship at Chedwin Park. Yeah, thank you very much there, uh, Gerard, and uh, good batting there from the Windward Volcanoes, who won their first two matches in the tournament and looking to push for another victory. A eighth first-class 100 from Sunil Ambris and a fifth first-class 100 from uh, Kavim Hodge. So uh, the Vincentian and the Dominican uh, dominating the batting today for the Windward uh, Volcanoes. Let's move over now to get the story from Sabina Park, where Barbados Pride resumed day two on 15 without loss, replying to the Jamaica Scorpions' first innings of 269. They closed on 315 for six, a first innings lead of 46 runs, led by the West Indies test captain Craig Brathwaite's 31st first class 100. The right-hander produced a patient unbeaten 129 from 290 deliveries, which included 13 fours. He shared in a vital 120-run fourth-wicket stand with Kevin Wickham, who added 6-3, and he had a century earlier on in the tournament, and they will resume day three with Shane Dorich on uh, 19. Let's move on now to St. Kitts and Nevis. We're at Warner Park. The Hurricanes responding to the TNT Red Force's meager first innings total of 137 all out. Got half centuries from Jewel Andrew, 87, and Kyron Powell, 65, before being bowled out for 318, a first innings lead of 181. Anderson Phillip was the pick of the bowlers with a 4 for 69, 62 for the Red Force. Brian Charles picking up 3 for 81. Red Force in their second innings, 48 without loss at stumps. Vikash Mohan on 25 and Cephas Cooper, former West Indies on a 19 player on 21. They are the not out batsmen. Red Force need a further 133 runs to make the Hurricanes bat again. And uh, before we move over to Coolidge, I want to um, highlight the fact that Joel Andrew, the most outstanding batsman in the West Indies team at the Under-19 World Cup recently, uh, getting some runs here against decent Tr Trinidad and Tobago Red Force bowling because in Anderson Phillip and uh, uh, Jaden Seals, we have international bowlers. Kara Pierre has international bowling experience as well. So the 17-year-old uh, getting runs here against uh, some, some big men. So at Coolridge now, this is what happened. Defending champions Guyana Harpy Eagles put on a strong bowling display to dismiss the West Indies Academy for 162 to take a 13-run first innings lead. Kevin Sinclair grabbed 4 for 45, while Guru Kishmoti and Virasami Permal both picked up three wickets each. 
So the spinners doing the business for the Harpy Eagles. Batting a second time, the Ghana Harpy Eagles closed day two on 165 for five to lead by 178 runs. Kevlin Anderson top scored with 49 against Ashmi Ned, uh, who is Ghanese. Four for 27 scores in the match. The Harpy Eagles 175 all out and a little better in their second innings at 165 for five. West Indies Academy 162 all out. So some gripping cricket there, and um, there was a little bit of pressure on Craig Brathwaite, having um, failed to um, do well so far in the tournament. But he, he batted on today, Mariah, and um, they say occupying the crease is important. Uh, he may not have been scoring freely, but he was determined to apply himself, and he got 100, 31st in first-class cricket. Yeah, I think that was so important for him because it doesn't matter how good you are. I mean, he has the title of skipper. It doesn't matter how many centuries you would have scored previously. I think sometimes, Lance, when you are required, because when he went to that test match, of course, everybody was counting on Craig Brathwaite to deliver the runs because he was with a team that, of course, had approximately seven debutants. A lot of pressure was on him. Unfortunately, he left that tour without getting a lot of runs on his bat. So I feel as if, you know, even if it's at this level right now, it's so important that, you know, he's accumulated this century and he'll go on again to play in the, the different matches, the upcoming matches. And it's important for his confidence because you need to get runs on the bat. They always say all a batsman wants is runs on his bat. He got that. Now we move forward. Yeah, so a good work there by Craig Brathwaite today, getting a, a hundred for the Barbados pride. Some breaking news we have for you because um, St. Lucia celebrating its 45th independence today. And I got a call from St. Lucia uh, via Joseph Reds Pereira, who lives in St. Lucia, uh, gave us some breaking news just before the show started that Shamar Joseph has pulled out of his Pakistan Super League contract because of the toe injury that he has. Uh, it's not fully healed, and he wants to give himself more time to get the injury fully healed. And there is every likelihood that he will play the last two rounds of the regional four-day competition, and his IPL assignment is still green light. So he will prepare for the IPL, Shamar Joseph, but the bowling sensation for the West Indies in the tour down under has decided not to push for the Pakistan Super League where I think he was scheduled to play for Darren Sami's team, Peshawar Zalmi, and um, he has decided not to go to that Pakistan assignment. Um, breaking news coming from Reds Pereira in St. Lucia. Yeah. The you holidaying know, St. Lucians. Yes, happy independence again. But, you know, the more I hear, Lance, about this two injury, it gets me a bit worried, you know, because Shamar Joseph has gotten all of us very, very excited. He has breathed life back into cricket, for me especially. And, you know... I just want this toe injury to be healed and yes. for us to move on and for us to continue seeing the best of him because pulling out of toes and stuff right now is, I'm sure even he's feeling extremely affected because yes. all a cricketer wants to do is play. Yes. You just want to play at the game that yes. you know and you love. Yes. So for me, it's a bit worrying, but yes. I'll hold strong. I'll yes. wait for the IPL because... Tough. The toe injuries are tough though, Mariah, because, you know, as an athlete, you're using your feet and your, your toe is within shoes and, and as a fast bowler it's even yeah so a toe injury can be a little bit um nagging but let's hope he gets through that well and uh, shine as we expect him to we go to break we'll be back with more on the sports might zone after this